So hi everyone, I hope you all can hear me. Um, quick introduction. Um, first of all, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, Voltum webinar series. Uh, my name is Merrick Bakels. I'm the, uh, I'll be your presenter today. I'm from Philips and I'm going to be covering off the uh, technical aspects of dimming LEDs, uh, more specifically mains dimming of LEDs. Um, if you have any questions, please use the chatter box on the left hand side and they'll be answered during or after the, uh, the uh, webinar. So we'll kick off with the first slide. Hopefully you've all had a chance to read that while you've been sitting there. So I'll, I will just move straight into the presentation. Okay, we're going to get into the, there's two types of dimmers that we use for dimming LEDs. Uh, the first type is uh, face cut dimming, uh, which is done on leading edge waveforms. Now, I, I probably need to explain a little bit of how this dimming technology works, just so we're all at the same level. So with a leading edge dimmer, you wait for the zero cross, and I'm just going to get a pointer here on the screen. So we wait for the zero cross on the um, waveform. We wait so many microseconds uh, or milliseconds, and then we fire the triac, which then conducts, and then the energy, the falling wave is what's left, and the power is the energy under the wave. Um, and we do that for the first half cycle and we do that for the next half cycle and so on and so on. Um, LED uh, for leading edge dimmers have been around for a long, long time. They're a low cost uh, device to, to manufacture. Uh, that, as I said, that technology's been around for quite some time. They were designed for um, in, mainly for incandescent and magnetic type of light sources. Um, and we've seen them be used on a lot of other bits and pieces. So you can see from the slide there, um, low cost per channel and really works well with iron core and um, incandescent lamps, but not so well with uh, CFL or with LED fittings. Generally LED fittings and CFL fittings have uh, capacitors as the first part of their circuit, which causes high inrush currents uh, when, the uh, when the triac conducts. Uh, which is, means that we have to have a fairly sizable derating factor for a dimmer channel. Um, the rule of thumb for these type of LED fittings is around about 20% of the dimmer rating. So if you've got a, you know, a 2400 VA dimmer, you're only going to get around about 240 watts worth of lead load against it, which is not a lot considering the, the power rating of the device. Um, the other th thing we need to mention here, of course, is the, uh, the dimming curves don't match when we're doing uh, conventional lamps and LEDs. Conventional lamps have a fairly linear uh, dimming curve, so um, where the LED lamp has more of an S-curve, so you don't seem to get a lot, of, uh, a lot of dimming occurring at the bottom and not a lot, so to speak, at the top, but it all happens in the middle. Um, I, uh, okay. Um, the other thing, of course, here, which is, a, is an issue which hope some of you may have seen, is the way these devices work, that they have a limited ability to f uh, filter out uh, fast flicker caused by mains fluctuations such as Zellweger tones and so forth. So you can see flickering occur at 10 o'clock at night, depending on which suburb you live in. The other type of dimming we have is a trailing edge dimming. Now, as opposed to the le leading edge, this time we allow the wave to rise naturally following the sine wave coming up and then we switch it off. This gives us uh, a very uh, low uh, inrush current, uh, far nicer for the electronics to work against. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so the pros and cons for this for trailing edge dimming. Trailing edge dimming is compatible with uh, you know, with resistive loads and it is certainly suitable for capacitive loads like your CFLs and of course your LED type fixtures. Um, it is not really designed for magnetic, current, magnetic transformers though. Uh, the, la the magnetic transformers when the, you get a collapsing field on a magnetic transformer you can put some large EMF back towards the transistors and that can cause the transistors to fail uh, which is not obviously not a good thing to, to do. 
Um, the, and as we say here, you know, significantly lower inrush currents and more favourable D rating factor. So you do actually get more LED per channel. Um, we have, if, of course, the other drawback with trailing edge though is it's more expensive to manufacture. You have a pair of IGB transistors or MOSFETs sitting back to back to do this type of dimming. So uh, again, it's yeah, it's a more expensive uh, solution, but a, definitely a better solution. Um, yes, the minimum dimming level on a trailing edge dimmer is also uh, is quite uh, is considerably improved. A leading edge dimmer, we'll, we'll come back to these slides in a moment, the, the leading edge dimmer, but the trailing edge dimmer will dim right down to you know virtually 1%, 2% depending on the driver and the lamp combination uh, without any real any real issues. With a leading edge dimmer we can see this, the, the, the minimum level is around about 10 to 15% at best. Um, so it, it's certainly a consideration. Of course, you know, there's a lot of these older dimmers floating out in the market, so you, you have to consider what lamps you're going to select for these, this type of dimming. So, what causes LEDs to flicker? The main issue for LEDs to flicker is, in a leading edge dimmer, is, is predominantly triac latching. Triac latching is when the holding current, which keeps the triac latched through to the next zero cross turns off just a little bit early because you're, it was designed for an incandescent or magnetic load originally now you've put you know a 10 watt LED on it the load is no longer there for the for the triac so we see this flickering occur um, you know mains flicker 50 hertz style flicker so there's how do we get rid of it well we've, we've got a couple of ways of, of well, first of all how do we find it first the simplest way we've found for testing and for, for triac latching issues is to just to add an incandescent lamp to the circuit. Um, an incandescent lamp will ensure that the current and the voltage stay in sync to the next half cycle. Now I might just go back to the original very first or second slides and show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, on this leading edge dimmer here we'll put our pointer in here right down here at this low point right at the towards the next zero cross you know in an incandescent scenario the voltage and the current stay in sync all the way to the zero cross and then the triac turns off but with an LED load the, tr the current waveform turns off just a little bit early before the voltage and that's where you start to see some flicker occur So that's one of the ways of, of testing to see if you've got issues with, with uh, leading edge dimmers and triac latching. Now, how to um, how to solve it? Now, we've we've manufactured a uh, a, lo a device called an active load to help uh, sort this problem out for leading edge dimmers. Uh, it goes in parallel with the dimmed output and tricks the dimmer into seeing a, a more resistive load. The device itself only consumes about 5 or 6 watts, so it's not a huge uh, uh, consumer uh, and can then just be permanently connected to the circuit. It could actually go be connected in parallel at the first light fitting and just sit in the ceiling space if need be. Um, but this device isn't just for leading edge dimmers. We have seen uh, with some of my testing and so forth that's been going on that the trailing edge dimmers can suffer a similar style scenario. So this uh, device, this active load, will work with both leading and trailing edge dimmers. It's a, pardon me, it, uh, we get a phenomenon called bat winging with trailing edge uh, dimming, um, where, the, if, where the capacitance is so high that it'll actually hold through to the next half cycle. And if you look on an, on an oscilloscope, it looks like bat wings is the, uh, the term for it. Um, one of the other things that causes leads to dim, particularly mains, and we are talking predominantly here, or nearly, yeah, predominantly about mains lamps. Um, the other one, of course, is we mentioned. I mentioned earlier was Zellweger tones or the off-peak water tones. They are very difficult to get rid of, and you can hear Zellweger tones in ceiling fans and that sort of uh, those sorts of devices overnight. They come through every 60 to 90 seconds from about 10 o'clock onwards, 
and uh, very, very, very difficult to get rid of and very expensive. Um, so the, really the only way to get rid of it is to have faster processes in controllers and uh, or head to types point source tile dimming uh, which is a different type of technology again where you would be looking at things like DALI or DSI where a message is sent to the fitting and the dimming all occurs at the fitting as opposed to across the mains. Okay, we've just had a question here. Is there anything that could be added to the site to reduce the Zellweger tones? There is some filters you can buy. Um, they're generally very small. Uh, people like Hunter Pacific, um, just they're one of the fan manufacturers, they make a, a, a filter for their motors just for blocking out Zellweger tones. But uh, from lighting side of things, there was an engineering mob in Mascot who were making small filters, but only up to about their maximum size was about two amps. Um, you know, if you're looking at a home, typically, typically your lighting circuit is you know either an eight amp circuit or, or a ten amp circuit. Uh, really, very very difficult to deal with. But in saying that, by reducing from incandescent down to um, LED, two amps may be an acceptable thing. The other th question, uh, part of the question was, or is it just a matter of upgrading the dimmers? Yes, look, upgrading the dimmers to trailing edge will certainly help, but it also depends on how close you are to the injection point of the off-peak tones. Um, when you sign up with, with your energy provider, they give you some parameters on how much variation in the mains that they can give you, and I think it's up to 9%, which is quite a lot. So if you're home is close to the injection point you will see you will, you're bound to probably see flicker regardless no matter what you do uh, part of my role is to do some um, LED testing we get uh, third party fittings as long as as well as our own Philips fittings uh, to test uh, we do this testing as a bit of a courtesy to the market to to let people know the compatibility of the dim of the the lamps that they're buying and so forth, and uh, we have had quite a few manufacturers, other manufacturers, drop lamps in for us to test for them. What we're testing for when we're testing these uh, these lamps is for the inrush current. We're talking about the inrush current for uh, leading edge dimmers being the you know the highly capacitive part of the circuit. So we want to make sure that we're not going to either damage the dimmer or the lamp by, by having uh, too much inrush. So our, we have 35 amp limit on our leading edge boxes and a 9 amp limit on our trailing edge. The trailing edge uh, uh, devices don't get anywhere near that typically, they're very good. The leading edge devices though, they can start to fly away pretty quickly. We also check for peak voltage. Uh, when, we, when we're talking about the leading edge waveform and we turn it back on, and I will go back to this first slide again, I'm sorry folks. Oops. When we turn on this leading edge dimmer, the mains is only 240 volts, but you get an un the, the dimmer, the, once the channel is gated, the, the current and the voltage fly away uncontrolled, and we can get voltage, as you can see in this table here, of over 300 volts. We've seen them much, much higher than that, and we have set a limit of 450, oops, 450 volts uh, peak on on testing that guarantees the well you know uh, guarantees the longevity of the lamp and of the dimmer. The other thing that has a, a major impact on on dimming of LEDs is rise time in the dimmers themselves, the size of the choke. There seems to depends on who makes the fittings. Unfortunately, sometimes we find more rise time is better, and other times we find less rise time is better. But it certainly has an impact on the performance of the dimmer and the dimming of the lamp. So we have to be careful uh, uh, of this. Um, we do all of our testing at the very worst case scenario, which is at a 50% conduction level, which is the uh, again back to that first graph shows you that we've waited for a 90 degree angle before we turn on the triac where we see maximum inrush current, maximum voltage to, um, and then from that we can ascertain maximum number of fittings per channel, uh, what dimmers they are applicable for, they might be suitable for some 10 amp dimmers but they will not be suitable for the din rail dimmers and so forth. 
and yet one of the other reasons we test this of course is for the dimmer longevity and of course your lamp longevity. So what's coming I suppose is really the the real question. We are currently working on a new platform for all of our uh, commercial grade dimmers. Uh, we're going to an STM32 microprocessor uh, which will give us a lot more uh, processing power than we've had before. Basically it's a doubling of our, our processor. So it will allow us to do more uh, accurate and, and faster um, frequency tracking, um, voltage regulation and zero crosses and that is again particularly for the uh, Sorry, uh, voltage rate for zero cross and stuff for, for main for mains tones and that sort of stuff and un, unstable tones. And I'm just seeing a question come online here. I'm sorry. Uh, yep, uh, is the list of competitors LEDs tested by Philips available? Um, at this point, no. We've um, to answer Steve Jones's question. No, we haven't. We've we have given the data back to the lamp manufacturers. Um, it's up to them what they want to do with it. Um, I don't want to be the one to sit there and say that, you know, brand X lead is terrible in the market and I don't want to <laughs> be sh spreading that through the market. So I've, all of those reports go back to the, um, to the manufacturers and what they, then they can promote their uh, lamps as being Dynalite compatible. I hope that answers that for you, Steve. Well, we've torn through the <laughs> through that presentation there. Is there any questions from anyone? Anything they'd like to raise or have clarified?